Now we're going to start this lot of shame to think what to talk about. It's a nice idea. Baruch Hashem. Why do you call money ma'ot? In Hebrew, money has a lot of names. Damim, Kesef, ma'ot. Why do you call it ma'ot? Because it's written, Ine en Hashem el yereav. Here is the eye of Hashem. Watching those who fear him. Lam yachalin lechasdo. What's the significance of Yerat Shamayim? If somebody asks you, what is it Yerat Shamayim? What is it? Is it afraid for the punishment? Is it afraid, afraid to do Chilul Hashem? Is it afraid that people would think it's a Rasha? What, what is the significance of Yerat Shamayim? Is it married from Hashem? One of the examples of being Yerat Shamayim is that you hoping and wishing for Hashem's salvation every minute of your life. That's Yerat Shamayim. Inne en Hashem en Yereav lamiachalim lechazdo. Who are you calling? I call Hashem. Why are you reading all day? Hashem. Hashem. Shiviti Hashem elegi tamid. That's called Yerat Shamayim. And it's written, Tzdaka tatzil mimavet. Tzdaka can save a person from death, if he gives enough. If he put a quarter once a week. No. How exactly is it going to save your life? Yeah. But if he puts an amount that hurts, it hurts when he gives it. That means it's a substantial amount, right? This kind of tzedakah, tatzil mimavet. If you put ayin in the middle of the word mavet, it becomes maot. You give money, you put the ayin in the middle of the word mavet, it becomes maot. When you give maot, money, the pasuk, ine en Hashem el yereav, the ayin of Hashem. That's why you put ayin. Ayin, what's ayin? Ayin is the letter also. Ayin is an eye, and ayin is the letter ayin. You put the letter ayin in the word maot, mavet, you get, ma, you get maot. You give maot, you get, you get life. That's the secret of tzedakah, tatsil mi mavet. The word shkarim, it's also money. Shekel. Shekel. The Shekel HaKodesh. Right? Shkalim. How much is that in Gimatria? 480. Why is 480? Against the wife of the Malach Hamavet. That she helps him to kill people. What's her name? Lamed. Yud. Lamed. Yud. Taf. One time I was in a Sundash Lishit in Monsi in Shul. And uh, Rabbi Adere, if you know him, he gave a speech there, the Sodash Rishi, 22 years ago, I think it was. And I have a friend, never got married. Now he's uh, close to 60 years old, never got married. Back then, I think he was 38. Trying very badly to get married. And uh, Rabbi Adere say some Kabbalistic idea that the Satan has a wife. And this was her name. <laughs> My friend got up in front of everyone. He said, It's not fair. <laughs> Even the Satan has a wife, and I still don't have it. <laughs> everyone was on the floor. <laughs> From laughing. Good point. I said, Maybe she do. What's her gematria? 480. 480 against 480. To eliminate her. To eliminate them. Mazon, food, is Gimatria 103. Like Emuna, with the Kolel, Emuna also. Mazon is the tool that Hashem is using to test us in Emuna. That's what's written in the Torah, the man. Don't keep for tomorrow. Trust me. I will feed you every day. Don't have to say Trust me, every day I give you what you need. Whatever I give you today, eat and enjoy. People that say it became rotten, full of worms. 
So it's written, Hashem said, I'm giving the man to see will they follow my Torah or not. What's the connection? In what kind of food you give me? Steak or chicken or bread? Yes, of course it is. If you get food, if you don't get food, it's a very big test in Amuna. Same thing. We have a rule that most of us ignore. Why? Not because we want to be weak. If somebody comes to a Torah lecture, for sure, maybe he's wicked, but one thing I can swear, that he doesn't want to be wicked. If he's wicked or not, only Hashem knows, maybe it makes sense. Okay. But if he comes to Torah lectures, someone speak, that means he wants to be better. If you go to a professor that gives a lecture about math, that means you want to be a better mathematician. You go to a soccer training, you want to be a better soccer player. You go to a special chef that teach how to cook, you want to be a better cook. Right? If you come to Torah classes or lectures or Musar talks, or you listen in your car, that means you want to be better. If you become better or not, only Hashem knows. One of the rules that we don't pay attention to, it comes from ignorance. We just don't understand what we do, but it's very severe, very severe mistake. It's written in Proverbs, Mishlei, 17, verse 15. Matzdik Rasha, Umarshia Tzadik, Toavat Hashem Gam Shnehem. Justify the wicked person's action. Disqualify the action of the righteous person. Both scenarios make you despicable in the eyes of Hashem. And this means all of us are despicable in the eyes of Hashem. I know it's very painful to hear it. I include myself in the head of the list. But that's reality. What's written, written. You cannot argue. How many times we give compliments in our life to wicked people, Mechalele Shaddai? How many times? Can't even count. Your cousin, your friend, your ex-wife. Rabbi is a great person. It's not religious, but he's a great person. Here you go. Or, how many times we disqualify good deeds over a tzaddik? Because we're jealous with him, because we don't like him, because he didn't give us enough credit. Something that is politics, pure politics. Oh, why don't you want him to speak here? Because the man will speak here than me. If he speak here, people won't like me. That's politics. That's called disqualifying and a qualified person. <laughs> Jealousy is one of the main reasons for it. There are other reasons as well. In another place it's written, Omer la rashat sadikata what, first of all, to understand, who knows what's the definition of Rasha, according to Hashem, not according to Ynet. <laughs> according to Hashem, who knows? What's the definition of Rasha? Someone that has a cruel faith? Someone that murdered people for a living? What's the definition of Rasha in one sentence? Okay. He knows that he chooses not to do. He knows, he knows that you're in the, he knows sometimes bad things and he chooses not to do bad things because he's tzaddik also. What you say could be also tzaddik. Ungrateful. Ungrateful. Ungrateful is one of the things on the list. I want something that defines the whole thing. The whole thing. Yeah, what does it mean to be Russia wicked? Break one restriction from the Torah purposely. That's the, that's the definition. He knows what I'm doing right now is against the Torah, and he does it routinely. For instance, shaving with a razor. Shaving with a razor. Hey, it's not allowed. 
I don't like uh, machines. I don't like. That's it. Rosh But it's Shomer Shabbat, of course. He goes to the Torah and does Yomi every day. Of course. He eats kosher, of course. He keeps the holidays, of course. His wife goes to the mikveh, of course. Shem on the razor, that's it. Put his kids in public school. Right there. Right there. Rosh Hashanah. He speaks the Shon Ara. Not a few moments that he lost his temper and he lost control of his head. Because when a person loses his mind, sometimes he speaks the Shon Ara that causes him a huge damage financially. You know you're going to pay for that, but you cannot hold yourself. That's a different kind of Avera. I'm talking for fun. But he and you see him, all the chachim, every day non-stop, negative, 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 all day. I just gave you an example. A woman, religious, but not modest. The, sh- the skirt above the knees, sleeves above the elbows, everything open, we here, we there, we be all over. <laughs> <laughs> ah, yes. So that's Rasha. So now it's written, Omer la Rasha Tzadikata. You come to a person, and you tell me he's such a Tzadik. Ikvu Amin. It's a term to say, you deserve Chas Shalom that an Arab will take his spear and stick it to your heart. That's what's written. Why? Because you say to a person that is wicked, that is a tzaddik. Now remember, we're not talking about a secular guy that doesn't keep anything. And you come and say, you're such a tzaddik. Here I understand the logic. We are talking a from Jew. He learns half a day in Kolel, and then he goes to work. Everything he does, but one thing routinely he breaks. Once a week, twice a week, every day, that's it. It's already Rasha. So technically, almost you cannot give any compliments to anyone based on this. To almost to anyone. So, what else? That falls in the category of Hanufa. Kissing up. Kissing up to people that don't deserve it. ואתה ידבר על מצדיק רשע ומהפך לזכותו שלו בפניו ולא מדרך הנופה. Not everything is kissing up. Kissing up, if I speak in front of the rich person, giving him compliments, hoping he will send me a nice donation check. That's called kissing up, חנופה. Or making him sit next to me on the stage in the shul. Like he's the Baba Sali or something. Just because he has a nice big business. That's called Hanufa. Everybody understands it. Even secular people will get angry. Look at this rabbi. Disgusting. Why? Why is it? Look. When I don't keep Shabbat, he doesn't want to shake my hand. This rich guy came, make him sit next to him on the stage. That's called Hanufa. It's right. Politician. What's good for me, not what's good for Hashem. That's politics. Rabbi is not supposed to be politicians. Politicians are living based on their lives. Everywhere they go, they tell people what they want to hear. They go to the Palestinian Authority. What's going on? It's a disgrace what the Israelis are doing to you. It's an apartheid. They come to Tel Aviv. Unbelievable. It's such a crime. Rockets falling on civilians. What are these Palestinians thinking? When I can't, we condemn strongly shooting rockets at innocent children and women. Men, it's okay. <laughs> That's politicians. Hussein Obama used to be like this. Within 20 minutes, two different speeches. At least Trump is consistent. If he lies, he lies to everyone. <laughs> he said the truth to everyone. Now one minute like this, one minute like this. At least it's consistent. Very good. So, so now we're talking that you compliment the wicked person, but he's not here. Oh, I'm not doing it for you to send me a check. No. Means I believe in it. It's not politics. מהפך בזכותו שלא בפניו ולא בדרך חנופה, רק באהבתו אותו, he's no cousin, you love him. 
He's your father, you love him. He's your father, you love him. He's your son. It's very hard for you to criticize your son or to see negative about him. Ve'amar ki to'avat Hashemu. It doesn't matter. Even if he's not next to you. To'avat, it's takeable. Ki adam chayav lisno et o'ivei Hashem. I know you heard this thing, but I speak with proofs, not from hunch or my daily feelings. I tell you what's written. If a person is not allergic to criminals, people that are criminals, you're not allergic, that's a sign that you do not love Hashem enough. Because if someone speaks at your father and you hug him, Everybody knows you hate your father. If someone speaks at your father, you cannot shake his hand after that. Why you don't shake his hand? He speaks at my father's face every day. How can I shake his hand? Oh, makes sense? Sorry, I didn't know. If you want to hug your father's enemy, someone wants to destroy your father, and you want to hug him and give him compliments, how exactly you a lover of your father? If someone's ungrateful to Hashem every minute of his life, Make fun at the religion. Make fun at kosher food. Make fun at Shabbat. Make fun at Hasidic people. Make fun at, at your beer. Make fun at your yarmulke. Like this idiot judge who saw this woman on the show now in uh, Independence Day. There's some uh, beauty queen that became religious. Made Shuma. She was Miss Universe, I think. Miss <laughs> Universe. You know, so she was the host of the show, and she came out with some kind of a turban to the fire, you know, the Empire State Building. And this liberal lefty judge, his eyes came out from anger. How can it be this religious woman with disturbance hosting such a show, Independence Day of Israel? I went crazy and made fun in her and all kinds of things criticized her. So one person told him, shame on you, if she was Fatma coming with this burqa. You would be the first one to stand and say, great, what a fantastic democratic city Israeli and country Israelis, giving equal rights to our brothers, the Hamas terrorists. They're better than the religious girl, that she became modest. They went crazy, this Arab love. Half of the people in this country are like him, what do you think? Half of them. 18 mandats to Tommy Lapi, 16 or so. Each mandat, I think, 30,000 people. That's half a million people. From age 18 and up. Take all their children with them. Here you go, 2 million people. Hate Hashem, hate Shoah, hate Rabbis. Hates yamakas, hates women that are dressed modest, love drugs, love all the garbage out there, love breaking Shabbat, love the enemies of Israel, running to mourn together with the suicide terrorists in Gaza, in Jericho. Ahmed, we feel bad for your son. Why your son had to die in the name of liberation? Against the occupation. What occupation? What occupation? Jews always own Israel. Always. And all one knows. By the way, you know, I've been saying for a long, long time that if I would go to the United Nations, I would give such a religious speech over there, the whole world would shake. It happened this week. The Israeli ambassador Danone gave a speech finally from the Tanakh. The whole world is rocking now. The goyim, wow. The Jews on Israel is right. From the Tanakh. Finally, <laughs> it's just lucky that the Arabs are not so clever. If the Arabs would be clever in the United Nations, one of them, I better cut it out for the people so I can give them ideas. <laughs> no, it already happened. If the Arabs would be clever, one Ahmed would get up and say, Mr. Danone, can I ask you one question? 
you're holding the Tanakh in your hand with such zealousy. Do you keep one of the laws of this Torah? Do you keep the Shabbat? Your wife dressed like my wife? Or you eat pork? I don't eat pork, you know, I'm Muslim. I don't charge interest for my brother Muhammad. You know, I'm Muslim. My wife don't go with bikini in Tel Aviv, you know. My son will not dare to say that he has a boyfriend. In my country, there's no things like this. If you want to do it, he will do it in the closet and stay there. But your son has a very nice talk show. He's a host, no? Flashing to the world about his abomination. You giving us speech from the Tanakh? First give the Tanakh, then come to preach to us in the name of the Tanakh. That will be the end of us. But if a religious person would go, they would bow down to it. They would bow down to it. Did you know Chinese people, almost all of them are atheists, you know? Some are Christian. Some are Buddhist. Most of them are atheists. It's against the law to be religious. In now in China, I was in China, they told me, I'm only going by what the Israelis that live there told me. They told me in China if they execute you, they execute thousands of people, your family has to pay for the bullets. They send you the bill for the bullets. Not that they need the five dollars that the bullet cost, it's the humiliation. You created that monster, you're gonna pay for the for the bullets that killed him. Okay. They told me a few things in China, and I saw some of them on my own. In China, they're passing now a law that everyone who will tell the authorities about a religious gathering will get a prize. So I told them, wow, that's very bad. Soon they're going to come to the synagogue. I said, no, no, they're not after us. They're after the Muslims. There's a lot of Muslims here starting to make mosques in houses. Prayers. If you come and tell them the few Muslims in this house praying every day, they come. In China, you don't have human rights, you know. They told me one day, one guy told me, I invested a million dollars in my office. One day the police came. You have 24 hours to get everything out of your office. We're knocking down this building. Why? We want to make a road here. No human rights. You cannot appeal, you cannot complain. They knock down the building, you invest a million dollars, it's gone. They want to make a road, you finish. You get out, that's it. And they love the Jews. You go on that cab, they see a Yama come, they ask, where are you from? Say, Israel, I'm Jewish. I don't speak such great English. <laughs> very smart people. I respect the Jews. I never saw in my life things that I've seen over there. For instance, I walk in the airport from the hotel to the airport. Five minutes walk and there's like a bridge connects you. I walk with one big suitcase and a carry-on. Every Chinese person in an airport come to me. Sir, can I help you? In the beginning, when I came, I say, okay, New York, I also want to help you for the $10 tip. <laughs> That's how they make money, but they're over there, it's not for the tip. No tip. And no one, they don't ask for tip, they don't hint for tip, nothing. You come out, it's rain, right the way the guy come with umbrella. So I ask them, tell me, if this is because I have a keeper, I always to everyone, say no to everyone. That's their mentality. He walks with you with the umbrella. You want to go to the place that's rain, you don't have an umbrella? He will hold it. Take you across the street. Unbelievable what I've seen over there. And I've seen millions of people in China, and now one of them was heavy. All of them extra, extra skinny. Unbelievable. Now one fat person in China. <laughs> Nobody. I don't know if it's in their genes. Or it's their diet. Sushi. Oh, sushi is Japanese. No, I think. No huh? Anyway, now one fat person I think. Everybody skinny like a stick. <laughs> but all kinds of interesting things. And they walk like machines. A woman in a shoe. 
I never saw in my last such thing. I said to the guy there, this woman doesn't go home. Three days, she's in the shore, sell being things, and yeah, she's a machine. I have to see how she walks. Serving to hundreds of people, meals. I spoke there one lecture after the other. Meal, lecture, davening, meal, lecture, davening. Runs, come back, pick up, this, that. Like a machine. In America, hey. Hey, how are you, Joe? Can you help me out? <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> and then if you give him five dollars, you get anything. What is this? What is this? What is this? I don't find money out. Let's conclude. Conclusion of what I just said here. It says like this. Someone that does not despise the enemies of Hashem, as it's written in Tehillim 139, Alo Mesanecha Hashem Esna, your haters are my enemies, David Amelech writes. Chayav lehaklotam. What does it mean, chayav lehaklotam? What does it mean, nikle? Nikle. What does it mean, nikle? Kal. Make him a nobody. Make him a nobody. What do you mean? He's the Prime Minister of Israel. He's Mechal Shabbat. He's nothing. It's the president of Israel. Mechanel Shabbat is nothing. Let him speak to the school. It's the president of Israel. He wants to come to speak in Yeshiva. Absolutely not. Can't speak here. Or oh, you cannot make me clear because you have a contradiction. You have to respect that. You don't put your parents down. But you do not stop it. You know if your parents are Mechanel Shabbat or not. You know the halachot. But, again, Rabotai, this I'm reading it to you. Don't say I say anything, you know. You're giving me too much credit. It's not me. It says, also, Velo, Omer Kaha, Velo, Vechayam Laklotam, Kmo Shenemar, Ubozai Ikalu. It's Samuel A, chapter 2. It's written, Ubozai ikalu, those who mevaze et Hashem should be put down. Kalim. Vezeraish, this person, not only he doesn't hate them, not only he does not put them down, he loves them and respects them and they are righteous in his eyes. How many sins he gained because of that, by giving respect to the wicked people. And because of him, people that see that he respects the wicked people, they do not despite their sins. And it does not look anything wrong in their eyes. And they say, it's worth it to be wicked. Look how much the rabbi or the religious persons honored me. And when he speaks, people give him respect. Because if the rabbi respects him, why shouldn't I respect him? Didn't he invite him to speak in a shul? Why you respect Dr. Holt? Rab Ephraim gave him a lot of respect. What do you want from me? I also have to give him respect. My rabbi gave him respect. Your rabbi is Chelat Amina Enoshi, your rabbi. Zrasha Merusha. He also brought a Nazi priest into the shul to speak Christianity. This is your rabbi. Why are you going to that shul? You're not supposed to play with such a rasha. But that's it. People are not thinking. Eh, I want to be good with everyone. Someone said to you, I love Israeli soldiers. They give their lives to protect their land. But I also love the Hamas terrorists. They also give their lives to protect their land. Make up your mind, you fool. Who are you with? Can't be with Hashem. 
and with his enemies. Choose a side. You cannot be a Yawan of his screen. Ad Mataya Tempo Screen and Shnel Seifim. How long you want to be modern orthodox, politically correct? One leg in a shul, one leg in a college. One leg in a yeshiva, one leg in Ynet. How long? Make up your mind already. When Mashiach comes, it's written. And when David comes, everybody asks, <laughs> keep dreaming. There's never going to be a generation that everyone is righteous, and there's never going to be a generation that everyone is wicked. No, there's no such thing. You always can have some righteous people. You always can have wicked people. You can fix the whole world. So Mashiach will never come based on that. No. You, know, you do not understand this Gemara. The Gemara say, and when David Ba, the Messiah will not come only for those who actually were half enough half wicked and half righteous. And now they become Kulo Sakai and Kulo Chaya. The world will split to two sides. Either you're fully righteous or you're fully wicked. There is no more traditional Jews. Half and half. Those traditional Jews will have a grace period. Choose who you are. Are you ultra orthodox? You stick to the real Jewish ideology 100% and you stop admiring these lousy professors and all this nonsense that they teach in Tekfira in universities and you go with Hashem, no problem, you get saved. You still want to be a rotten professor with a little shekel yamaka on your head? You wait and see what happens to you when Mashiach comes. Meaning the human being, not the whole generation. The whole generation is not possible. The human being, Shekulo Sakai or Kulo Chayab. No more half and half. It has to be. Because half and half, Hashem does not have to judge. How, how, where will I put this guy? He keeps Shabbos. He keeps Saka. He eats Kocher. He keeps the holidays. And he goes to the theater to watch Goish music from Hollywood. Yeah. Or watching all kinds of shows. Oh, it takes me out of my depression. Let's check why you're in depression in first place. Oh, you make so many sins. You get the depressed, of course. The sin is the nefesh. What do you think? I want to conclude. Forgive me that I stick a little bit longer than you used to. Not every day I come here, you know. So, I allow myself to force myself on you, because it's not myself, I force the draw on you. And if I want to give you a diamond, I don't need to ask your permission. I'm sure you would like it. Torah is much more important than the diamond. And plus, from the body language of the people here, I don't see exactly that you suffer besides the heat. <laughs> what can I do? That's my tikkun. And whenever you see I go to places, the air condition always break. It's only for me. The day I'm going to fix this bed without myself that I'm boiling, the air condition will all be freezers. Just for me, last night in Hulon, 200 women on the top with plates. Paper plates. Why? Because it's my speech. It has to be asked, what can we do? Talk. I was going to have to turn it off, but after you said the fan story, I thought... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you can add some salt to my wound later. <laughs> anyway, Rabotai, in order for you or, or anyone to be righteous, you need four things. Four things in your life. First category, you have to keep as many mitzvot as possible. Positive needs. Everybody understands that. Even the Noe knows it. Even Philonim knows it. Everyone knows it. Okay. Second category, you cannot make sins. You cannot violate restrictions of Hashem. 
can steal, you can have a you can have a dream, you know, there's a lot of restrictions. This, anyone understand that? Goim understand that? Kilonim understand that? That's what's allowed. What's not allowed? Okay. No need to be a genius to know this too. The next one, some religious people know, most religious people do not know. What's the third category? What is it? What else do you need in order for you to be in a category of the righteous people? Huh? No, that's the fourth one. What's the third one? Midot. To fix your bad character traits. You're angry, get rid of it. Stingy, get rid of it. You're jealous, get rid of it. You're lazy, get rid of it. You're selfish, get rid of it. There's a lot of problems. Anger, ego, it's a disaster. It's poison. Poison in your system. So, most religious people are not aware of the necessity and the severity of not fixing the middle. They don't understand that if you are a proud, arrogant person, even if you keep holding it forth and you know the whole trust by heart, you are now with the label on your forehead, despicable human being. That's what I should put on your forehead. And I know the whole trust by heart. Just as much as Rafael Kanievsky knows. But you're not Rafael Kanievsky. He has a very good stick, sticker on his forehead, and you have a different one. Why? It's full of ego. Everyone has to bow down for me. Everyone has to. I'm there. I'm in charge. It's the whole world is for me. Everyone has to serve me. That's how people are in the house. The Mara say that someone that is proud, even his wife and children cannot stand it. I always tell people, you want to know if the rabbi is kosher or not? Call his home number, not his cell phone. And see how his wife and children react when they pick up the phone and you ask for it. If you're clever, you will know when you answer. <coughs> how when they, when they hear that you're looking for the father or the husband, by the way they talk, you already know if they can stand him or not. <coughs> yes. Because the wife and the children, they know who the father is. On the show, on the stage, nobody knows who you are. They know what you say. And the nice show you put. But when you live inside with someone 20, 30, 40 years, they know exactly who you are. They know how you speak. They know how you curse. They know what time you wake up in the morning. They know how you lie to people on the phone. You sit next to your woman and you lie to people on the phone and she hears all your lies. No wonder she doesn't respect you. The greatest drama in the world is my <laughs> greatest drama. I've seen it. If your wife and children respect you, most likely Hashem respects you very much. Most likely. Because this is people that cannot put a show next to them. They know who you are. I once had a guy, I gave a shiur in Rosh Chodesh for women in the young kids. It was only for women, but they told me one father wants to come with his son to speak to you. Around noon. I said, well, I said his, father, his son goes with a non-Jewish girl. He's worried that she's not going to get married. So, do you mind? I said, no. Tell him to come. When I finished my lecture, he showed up with his son. His son was in his 20s. I spoke to the son about the severity of Mary Goya. So, I told him, you know, if children are not going to be Jewish, this, that. It's a disaster. He said to me, don't worry, Rabbi, you don't have to preach to me about this. Although I love her very much, and she loves me very much, and she's a wonderful person, I would marry her in a second, but I will never do it. I say, yeah, right. You know how many people spoke like this in the past? <laughs> and, uh, he said to me, no, no, not me. I say to him, why not you? I will never do it to my father. I say, why? It's your life. Why? My father is such a good person. He's really tzaddik. I can never do it to him. Meaning, meaning, 
But if the father was a crook, a faker, a liar, whatever you want to say, he would just of course I get married. This is problem. Let him worry about his own life. And that's, by the way, one of the reasons why most children who go off the derech come back in the end. If their parents are good people or not. If they are good people, they come back eventually. Most of them, not everyone. But if they are fake, they won't come back. They only become more extreme against. One time, uh, I had to speak to a Hasidish boy. His father asked me to speak to him. I spoke to the boy... And the boy told me, this other thing, who does he think he is? He's all bluff. He's all fake. I say to him, hey, don't talk like this. Why are you so angry? He say, my father gives me $500 every month to dress like a chusid. Why he does not give me $500 a month to keep Shabbos? Because all he cares about what the people will say about him in a community. He doesn't care about me and about my soul or about Hashem. Only what the other Hasidim thinks about him. <sighs> it's fun. Shake it. Shake it. So I have to put this custom like I'm a Hasid for $500 a month not to embarrass him. Why does he say dress, dress blue shirt? I don't care. Wear jeans. Keep Shabbos, it's much more important than what you wear. Your soul will be cut for eternity. I care for you, son. Chabad, you're like a goy if you bring Mechal Shabbos. You cannot even be buried in a Jewish cemetery. Bury you like a, like a goy on the other side of the world. I pay you for not breaking Shabbos. Ah, you care so much. You want to pay me not to make sins, that means you really are a you only want me to put a show that I'm religious. You care about yourself. You don't care about me. Smart boy. Oh, Hashem was able to convince him that his father is not Hashem. And he has a problem with Hashem, not with his father. Slowly, slowly, he made Chuvah, oh, Hashem. But just to give us an idea. So the third category is fixing the middle. And very uh, big amount of religious people are not even aware of this urgency. I keep all the mitzvah. What do you mean? But he's the same proud person for 20 years. And the fourth category, and we finish right here, the fourth category is Jewish Ashkafa. Torah ideology. And this, almost no religious people have any idea what it is. Nobody. Almost nobody. Besides real Bnei Torah that have great rabbis and are connected to good books, almost no one even knows what Jewish Ashkafa is. You see religious people that their God is the Israeli army. You see religious people that their God is Benjamin Netanyahu. You see religious people that their God is Leonel Messi. You see religious people that their God is Maccabi Tel Aviv. You see religious people that their God is Donald Trump. You see religious people that their money is their God. You see religious people that the university is their God. You don't have a degree? I don't want to go on a date with him, Rabbi. He doesn't have a degree, but you're a multi-millionaire. What do you worry about the degree? He has plenty of money to buy you anything you want. No, no. I want educated guy. Educated. College education. You call it education? It's bad shimosh. It's garbage. It's the waste that people dump in the garbage. Why do you compare this to Yeshiva, to Gemara, to Torah, to Zohar, to Halakha? Compare Rambam to this stupid professor that teach you their nonsense? 99% of what you learn over there is heresy, fira. Everything over there is against Hashem. Harvard University is rich to such a level that is the number 36 in the world in countries. Number 36 in the world. Income 26 billion dollars. Harvard University. Tax free and the government gives the millions of dollars every month aid. 
People pay two hundred thousand dollars a year over there. Twenty six billion dollar income. Thirty six world economy. Better than all Africa. Better than almost all South America. Better than half of Europe. Richer than countries. University. Five hundred years of robbing people. Five hundred years. All universities, not only them. I'll, I'll show you a show that someone made. I pulled my hair off when he showed the statistic and the numbers. What did they teach over there? Came from a monkey. There is no God. People that believe in God are primitive. That's what, what did they teach? Speculative science. The world is billions of years old. Almost everything heresy. So you'll be a great doctor. No, beautiful. You'll be a wonderful lawyer. You'll be Hussein Obama. Hussein Obama. What did it help him that he went to Harvard? In reality, you know anyone dumber than him? He gave $150 billion to Iran to occupy the world and destroy the world. He put America in danger. Forget Israel. Israel is the last thing on his mind. His own country put in danger. All the problems they have now with Iran, that Iran's waving and is, Iran is not... Iran is putting a show here. We're going to close this, we're going to do that. Where they got this money from? The power. Everything was frozen in America. $150 billion he gave it to them. Took them out of the grave. Another few months there would be a revolution over there. The nation couldn't take the sanction anymore. He took all their money in America and gave it to them. You know a dumber person than this? Someone come to kill you and your children. Come, come, I have a saving. Let me, let me take the saving and give it to you. You can kill me faster. How about the graduate? Lawyer. That's what it is. That's the truth. The universities here are any better? No, no, Rabbi, I go to Barilan. It's religious. Barilan, religious. Religious. Every, every university you claim to be religious, I prove to you that almost everything there is against Hashem. Religious university in New York should have a gay club. No one hide it. Gay club. Yeah. People went to universities. One invite a Christian priest and Dr. Wood to Ishul. Another one in Toronto invite a Muslim imam to speak to his community. While the Muslims exchange a telephone number with the Jewish girls in the ladies section. Someone that was there called me to tell me. Another one Another one went to the gay parade, took pictures with the gays and put it on his Facebook page. I came to show support to the community, calling so the rabbi. Another idiot gave a speech, homosexuality and feminism is a wonderful development to humanity. Another idiot, the chief rabbi of England, in Mahshim of Zichro, everything he came to do to help Christianity to destroy Judaism. This is the example he gives. He goes to soccer games and take pictures with the goyim who kick the ball. That's what's on his mind. As the shalom, someone here will become fool. And even hundreds of them. Hundreds of them. How much heresy they have in the writing. They are much the biggest enemies of, against Hashem of the history. No one in the human world has so much heresy against the Torah than these university rabbis. Of course, not everyone is like this. I know a few people went to university and are very full, but they did not become full from the university. That's for sure. They became full, although they went to university, and that's a miracle. Why would you put your children over there? Rabbi, if he's not going to go there, what kind of job is going to have? A Bukharian Uber driver make more money than your son that went to university. Check. Uber driver, listening all day to lectures, learning Torah while he's driving people. Where do you need to go? JFK. 150 bucks. It's one hour of learning Torah. And what is your son doing? Dentist. <laughs> I tell it today. Oh my God. How much I suffer. Rabbi, I'm a dentist. No wonder the number one committing suicide in the world is dentist. <laughs> yes. 
all they have to dig in people's mouths. This guy just had shrimp, pork, come to you like this, you have to smell it. But you are educated. Wow. You went to college, you went to school, no? This is Jewish ideology, Jewish corruption, a cold bluff. And when Mashiach comes, a lot of these fake religious people will get the shock of their life. Trust me when I tell you, wake up. Because it's going to be too late by then. You want to get education? Fine, I'm not telling you what to do. But at least fix up your ideology, your ashkafa. Enough admiring wicked people. Enough admiring politicians. Enough thinking if the right will be the government, so Mashiach would come. The Arabs would leave us alone. It's baloney. You don't understand the Arabs is the best thing that happened to us. If they wouldn't be here, probably we would not have Minyan here left. The only reason people are still connected to religion is because of the fear. Fear motivates people to do things. If you live here in like Switzerland, making millions and nobody bother you, how many people will stay religious? Why did Hashem send the Arabs after us everywhere we go? Not only in Israel. Every Jewish community in the world immediately the Arabs come to live there. Check. Why? You don't see the end of Hashem. You don't see Hashem send you police to guard you. You don't see. Everywhere you go, the Arabs arrive there. What's going on here? Give us one minute, one place to live without your arm. Why they come? You know why the Arabs come? For the meat. Hashem drove them in their mind that they need to eat kosher meat. They don't know what kosher meat is. Halal. Muhammad, yalla, halal. The Jews slaughter, we also can eat only slaughtered animal. So what happened? Everywhere they go, they don't have shkita. So they go where the Jews live. Look how Hashem arranged it. Because anyway what they eat is taref. It's not kasher. If a Jew eat halal meat, he saw the writer, like he didn't have this, same thing. Last sentence for today, speaking about kosher meat. You know, it's written in the Torah, <coughs> meat that came out not kosher. You make shkita, the animals, not kosher, whatever, taref, or nevela, whatever it is. Et nevela, you have to throw to the dogs. La kele tashikhun oto. The question that I have is, is this an obligation to give it to the dog? Or if you like, give it to the dog. If not, put it in the garbage or give it to somebody else to eat. Go over there. Hey, Tony, come, I have a steak for you. Why don't you eat it? It's never lie, you won't understand. Eat and enjoy it. <coughs> no problem. Why do I have to give it to the carrots? Is this an obligation? Like it's written in the Torah. Do not charge interest from your brother. Meaning you cannot charge interest from Jews. La goy tashikh. From the goy you can take. Is this an obligation to take from the goy? Is that a mitzvah? Or it means, since you cannot take from your brother, you are allowed to take from the goy, if you want. Different opinions. Some say if you take your interest from the goy, you make a mitzvah from the Torah. Some say, no, it's permission. Same thing over here. You give now the nevela to the dog, you do what Hashem say to do, or not necessarily. Also different opinions. The question is, why did Hashem say to give the nevela to the, to the dogs? I understand to the cross, they fed the Yahweh Navi, they did something positive, the cross. The cross like means they see a dead animal, they always come. But why to give it to the dog? The answer, as you all know, Hashem educated. So the answer is because the dogs did not bark when we came out of Israel. Big, big. <laughs> wow, you want the reward for sitting on the chair? Well, I don't get it. Somebody got up and went and broke a glass and stole something from the, from the, from the store. And you were there, sitting on a chair, and you did not get up to steal. You didn't steal. You sat on a chair, you didn't do anything. You didn't stop it, you didn't scream, hey, police, nothing. Don't do it. You just sat on a chair. 
the police come. So what happens? Uh, someone was sitting in, he broke the glass and stole, I don't know, whatever. And what were you, what were you doing? You can check in a camera. I was sitting here all, all the time. Okay, come, we'll give you $5,000. The police station. You give me $5,000 for what? For not participating in a robbery. <laughs> Since when you get a reward for not being a criminal? Sitting and doing nothing. From here we learn that Hashem is so great, so great, and so generous, that the ability to do a sin and not doing it, it's already a mitzvah. You get a reward for it. Sitting over there, and I have something to say against him, and I don't, huge reward. I can also take from the robbery, I don't do it, huge reward. I can sit and watch the game. I'm not, I didn't turn it on. I, I go away. You usually won't. I'm not making the scene. For not making the scene, you usually won't. For being quiet, you usually won't. Who got the biggest reward in the history? For one minute of silence. <coughs> Who? Lord. Lord. Lord did two big mitzvot in the Torah. One, the angels came to his house. People thought they are people. The people of Sodom, San Francisco people, showed up. <laughs> they all showed up. I was there a month ago, two months ago in San Francisco. Shem <laughs> Irachem. I'm still in re- rehabilitation. <laughs> you know, San Francisco, China, Oh Hashem Bechem. <laughs> So in San Francisco, they came to rape the guest of God. They want to rape them. Lord is willing to give his daughter. No, we don't want your daughter. We came for them. No, okay, take me. Take me. We mean kill me. No, no, we don't want you. We want them. Okay. That's one time he was willing to die for strangers. How many people would do such things? Okay. Next time Lord did something good is when Abraham and Sarah standing in front of Pharaoh. And Abraham says, she's my sister, and Lot followed them to take all the money that Abraham has, because he has nobody to inherit him. That's my chance to become a billionaire. My uncle is a billionaire. All I have to say, Abraham, come on, don't lie to the king. How do you do such thing, uncle? She's your wife. Why do you say she's your sister? It's not nice to lie to the king. That's it. You give Abraham, take Sarah to Paro, and you and Paro not only give you everything Abraham has, he will add his own commission for giving him Sarah. And you become a billionaire. And you are the greediest person. How do we know? The Torah said that Abraham said to him, hey, why, you know, why should we fight? And he chose the green side. Shame on him. I come with my uncle. He defeats me. He gives me everything I have. One day I will take everything he owns. And he asked me which side you want to go, and I take the good side and let my uncle take the, the desert. Showing how greedy you are. And he was standing over there dying to talk, but he kept his mouth closed. And for that, Hazan said, Hashem gave him a huge reward. Not for getting ready to kill himself and his daughter, no. For the one minute of silence, Hashem decided that the Mashiach will come from him. Mashiach comes from Lot. Ruth and Moaviyah. Amon and Moav came from Lot. Ruth came from him. And David and came from Ruth. And Mashiach comes from David and He got the reward. Lot. What? For one minute of silence. From here we see that sometimes to be quiet is <laughs> harder than anything in the world. You follow the fire, the screen, and you don't talk. And for sitting and not talking like the dogs did not bark, you get a huge reward. Why? It's, it's a root nefesh. It's against your nature. You want to say, you be quiet. Any questions before we finish? Any? You're pointing to the women? Yes, you're right. <laughs>
you that you wanted your children to be with sometimes let you down more than the the, the institutions that don't have a great name but the year actually your mind is so pure that you want to stick with that a bit more unfortunately you are 100% right could the question be I will repeat, uh, from the answer you get the, the point. Okay, uh, unfortunately, you're right. Some places are really religious, yes. and some places are great politicians. Uh, we, have, we have to beg Hashem that the rabbis of our children will be real kosher people, and the institution of their land will be good kosher people, and the neighbors and our mechutanim, and who we get our children to marry to, that will be kosher your people that you mentioned. But reality wise, some people, all they care is what people think about them. There's nothing with Shem Shaman. It's just a show off. We have to be clever to detect which people are like that to stay away from them. Because this is all fake. What people will say about them? That's all they care about. But what about what Hashem thinks about you? How many people speak and give lectures and now one time in ten years they spoke words of rebuking the people, Musa, shaking up people, telling them about their sins, nothing. Why you don't say it? Why you are politically correct? Why everything is fake? I'm afraid to turn them off. They won't come. They will stop donating. That's what it cares about. They won't like me. They'll fire me. They won't buy my books. It's all about him. What about what Hashem wants? Who cares? Isn't that why all the children, so many children are going off to Derek? That's the main reason why so many so children. Cho- children that are smart, they detect the fake religion. They smile. I always tell people when your kids in yeshiva, and they ask a lot of questions, some yeshivas, some, not all, some yeshivas will target the kid as a troublemaker, infidel. Koifer is asking questions of kfira. Reality, if I was the Rosh Yeshiva of this institution, I would give him a medal. If he asks me, how do I know God exists? Very good question. How do I know Moshe Rabbeinu is real? Very good question. How do I know the Torah is from Hashem? Maybe people made it up. Very good question, a smart boy. How do I know the oral Torah from Hashem? Maybe the rabbi made it up. How do I know this is what Hashem really wants? How do I know? Maybe today the world changed. I don't want to be a robot. I don't want to just copy people. I would make the kid the star of the school. Finally, one smart kid. Not the robot that follow everything he sees. But the problem is that today people don't want to handle questions. They don't want to handle challenge. A lot of these rabbi... They don't want problems. They just want to come, say what they have to say, the Gemara class, and go home. But the idea is that you find, I say to people, my son asks all these questions, I'm very worried. And finally, he's smart. He's not stupid. He cannot fool him. In life, it's going to be a great advantage. There are answers to all these questions. There's nothing to be afraid of. But at least you should be proud that your son is not stupid. Look at these one and a half billion Muslims. They tell him the Quran is from Muhammad. It's full of nonsense. Every normal person in five minutes should have run away from this book. But they're willing to die for it. Why? Almost nobody is there clever to ask questions. Wait a minute. How God would give a book to a person that did not know how to read and write and is not even Jewish? Everybody else was holy people. Why would they give someone that is total ignorant? Question number one. Question number two. Why there are so many mistakes in a book? Doesn't make sense. Question number three, why it say to hate the Jews when we believe in the Torah and the Torah say to love the Jews? There's so many questions you ask. Every once in a while you find one normal Muslim that asks this question and kick it. Finally one small person. We, however, we can ask any question we want and Baruch Hashem the Torah has very good answers to every question. At least it shows that you're smart. They're not stupid. Why do you want me to tell you? Can we fix the world in one day? Obviously not. We have to, uh, we have to leave, take the bad with the good. It's really no solution to it. Any more questions? Yes. Where do we start? 
there's a, there seems to be a systemic problem with, with, with lack of modesty. And a, a perfect example would be just a, just a stone person walking down the street. The, the, the ladies walking down the street says, when is it mutar to see their figure? Says, when is it mutar for their legs to look better with their hose? No, that is not. But you see this in the Bay Yalkoff schools? They yes. wear the, they wear the, you know, the, the flesh uh, color. It's a huge, a very huge crisis in modesty today. Huge. By religious people. Huge. Even those who follow the rabbis who allowed wigs, which is already a problematic issue, but even those who follow rabbis that allow her to put wig, they never put the wig that the rabbi meant. Always ten times longer. Because people lie to themselves. They lie to themselves. It's unbelievable how people fall, in, fall into their own trap. And all the tight skirts and the sh- short skirts. How religious women wear mini skirts thinking it's modest. Why? Satan is a genius, what do you think? It's not in one day. It's a process of years. Every year the, show, the, the skirt is one centimeter shorter. Until Hashem Yerachim, what happened? Same thing, everything else. The way against it is to listen to a real speaker that speaks and screams and scares the people what's going to be their end. The problem is that how many speakers like this you know in the world? Can you count them in one or two and maximum? That's it. In Israel, you still have some. In America, nobody talks. Not only that, the world became such a place that there's always, there were, there were always some speaker who speaks strong and some who speaks weak. But the people that speak, spoke strong, they got a lot of respect and credit. Today is the other way around. When a person speaks strong and says what the Torah exactly says is not politically correct, a lot of these other fake ones, speakers, do everything they can to put him down that he should not have followings. That's what they do. Instead of saying, I wish I was like him, brave, to say the truth. He, some say, some say, everything he says is true. It's not my nature to speak like this. But some say the opposite. Oh, I should listen. That's not the way. She loves everyone. It's no problem. It's good she wear a skirt. Who cares how long? At least she covers the hair. Surrendering to the Satan. Okay, this wig is also good. This music is also good. This kashrut is also good. Everything is also good. Until nothing is left. That's what happened to the Reform and Conservative. What do you think? Overnight they marry men with men? It's a process of 200 years until they became worse than going. But back then, they only changed Fiji. The reform 200 years ago were more religious than us. The first generation of reform people. And today they marry Jews with Goim and eat pork. That's it. Once you begin to break the fence, the sky is the limit. It's no end to it. Where is the limit? You have to stick to real people that teach the truth. You have a Sternbuch in Israel, it's very good. It's not a politician. You have Rav Mazuz, it's also very good. There's a lot of other good ones. I'm just giving a few names. Stick to the books of Rav Avigdor Miller. Everyone who sticks to the books of Rav Avigdor Miller every day of his life for sure will be tzaddik. I promise you this. He will follow the right Jewish Ashkafa. I don't, I never met anybody, and I met hundreds of big giant hachamim that was so straight in Jewish Ashkafa. Never. I never saw. In any topic I read his answers, mamash diamonds. Now one time I saw one thing that is chas v'shalom, of the, the truth, or kfira, or, or politically correct, or kissing up to the authorities. Never. He spoke, that's the joke that he said, that the rabbis of Brooklyn lies, loves me very much. Every once in a while I give a speech and half of my people in my congregation run away to other shoes. <laughs> Why? They can handle the truth. That's it. I want to thank all of you for coming here tonight. Thank you very much. Thank you everyone.